Hello there everybody, Sam Strains here, welcome back to the railway and welcome to another review. Up to date I've got an electric locomotive from Hornby. Given all of the frankly absurd pricings that we've seen from Hornby recently, today I thought it would be quite nice to look at a more affordable model in Hornby's range. So with that in mind I have picked up this. This is the Hornby Class 92 in the Caledonian Sleeper livery. And the really good news is that this seems fantastically affordable for a fully fledged <laughs> Hornby Railways locomotive because the ROP is just £102.99 and I bought mine from Kerno for just £64.99. So that's the good news. The bad news is that I'm pretty sure that this is an ex Lima locomotive from 1995, making the model 27 years old. So <laughs> mm, that does add a little bit of a dampener to it, but hopefully Hornby have upgraded this in some way. And so surely this will have to be a decent loco at £64.99. Although this is Hornby, so you never quite know what is possible. So we'll take a look at this today. I suppose the big question will be, does this locomotive belong in the Hornby Railways range, which is Hornby's top of the range stuff? Is it actually better than what you'd expect to see in the railroad range, which is the lower range, where I suspect this might belong? But let's find out whether that is the case. Let's take a look. All right, the Hornby Class 92, and I will include some affiliate links down in the description if you want to pick one of these up. Unfortunately, I can't find these available at that ridiculous sale price that I found at £64, but they are quite reliably at or just below the £100 mark, so check that out if you're interested. Acura Scale, I believe, are also producing a Class 92, so if you're not interested in spending £100 on an almost 30-year-old model, then that might be worth looking into. But today, we have the Hornby one. Let me show you the end of the box then. So the version I have here is R3740. It is the Caledonian Sleeper Class 92, and it is number 92023. And this is a DCC ready locomotive. So that speaks of the first of the upgrades that this will have seen over the original Lima model. Obviously the originals would not have had DCC sockets. Anyway, let me show you the back of the box because there's more info here. So route availability seven, that indicates whereabouts on the network the locos could travel. Then in the middle, you have a history of the real class 92s. So pause and read that if you want. And then on the end of the box, you've got some drawings of the model, and yes, they are dated 1995. Must be said, though, the top of the model, at the very least, does look quite complex. So it'll be interesting to see how much fidelity and detail there actually is on the model there. Hopefully, if Hornby have done some upgrades on this, then it should be well worth £100. For instance, looking at the bogies on the front of the box here, it doesn't appear as though either of these are dummies without driven wheels. They both seem to have a bit of an upper chassis going to them, which could suggest that this loco has been upgraded to have all wheels driven. That upgrade would be well worth it, in my opinion. Hopefully we won't be dealing with traction tyres on this loco. This bogey, there seems to be the base of the ring-filled motor visible, so it's possible that they've just used a really old photo. <laughs> Don't have a good feeling about that, but let's see. Let's see what the actual model is like then. And there it is for the first time, the Hornby Class 92. All right, let's see what this is like then. So let's pull out the instruction pack because I'm thinking there might be some more information on the mechanism here. All right, Class 92, Coco Diesel Electric Locomotive. You know, I did not know this was a diesel electric. I thought this was a fully electric loco. Let's check. Right, well I've looked it up and I can't find anything to suggest that this is a diesel electric locomotive. Pretty sure it's just an electric. Note to self, don't rely on Hornby getting information right because they seldom do. Anyway, lubrication, yeah, very basic. For some reason this is showing a Bobo locomotive. So, yeah, I don't know, let's just get it over with. Body removal, yeah, just clips by the looks of it. Ugh, ugh, come on, screws are better than clips, but whatever, I guess that's the Lima way, isn't it? Working pantographs, this sounds interesting. Some Humby locomotives, so we're starting specific, are fitted with operating pantographs for use with the Hornby overhead power supply system. In these locomotives, power can be either obtained from the overhead catenary wire or from the track in the normal way. 
It doesn't explain whether or not that applies to this locomotive, although I will find out later on for you. <laughs> and then nothing much on the back. Okay, so not the most helpful instructions in the world. They are showing a locomotive that is not the one in the box, and they are giving general information and not actually specifying whether or not that information applies to this. So great work, Cornby. Now we know where we stand. Okay, so there is no accessory pack visible with this loco, so we'll get it straight out and see what we're dealing with. Okay, now we're going to get a good view any second of the... Oh, okay, one of the pantographs has come up to meet me. Okay, does it go back down again? Wasn't really expecting that. Or has it, is it just broken? Let's have a look. Uh, oh, I see. I think the pantograph is supposed to just hook behind that thing there. Okay. <laughs> right. So, a few observations, first of all. The loco is quite light. When you buy a loco of this size these days, you tend to get a lot more weight than this. It does seem to be very light. Quite a plasticky finish, unfortunately. Yeah, not what I would call a quality finish, although the decoration does look pretty good. There is a lot of detail on the top of the model, it must be said, quite a bit of complexity here, but it doesn't look particularly fine. There's something a little bit toy grade about this. I think that's because a lot of the locos we look at that are modern and recently designed tend to have a lot finer detail than we can see here. But uh, in terms of you know the number of components and the complexity, it seems pretty good. Now, in terms of the bogies, there's something a bit naughty going on here because, as you can see, this is clearly a driven bogey and you've got the chassis going up into the loco body, as shown in the illustration on the front of the box. And then this bogey looks completely different from the illustration on the front of the box because looking at this, you can see, even from this angle, that this is a non-driven bogey. And turning it up onto its end and looking at the wheels, yeah, sure enough, these are just free to wheel. Now that is not what was seen on the front of the box. So yet again, we've got another Hornby product where the front of the box shows better features than what we've actually got in the box. I am not a fan of that sort of practice, to be honest. It's not necessarily being done to deceive, but regardless of the intentions, it does come across as a little bit deceitful, doesn't it? So anyway, I think we're dealing with quite a simple locomotive here, yes. Whether or not it's got lights is still a big question. I think any Hornby Railways locomotive should have lights. A lot of them don't though, so no high hopes. So let's have some history on the Class 92. It's a very interesting class, by the way, so we'll have that, and then we'll take a much closer look at the level of detail. <clears throat> Sorry, let's try that line again, try and do it with a straight face. And then we'll take a close look at the level of detail on this locomotive. The British Rail Class 92 was introduced in 1996 when the first of 46 examples were constructed for use between Britain and France by the Channel Tunnel. As such, it was designed to be used on multiple different railway systems with support for both 25 kV AC or 750 volt DC supplies, delivered from either overhead wires or third rail, so quite a versatile locomotive. Most of the electrical systems within the locomotives as well were duplicated as a failsafe during journeys through the tunnel, as of course a breakdown there would be quite complicated. The locomotives were considered mixed traffic, so they were ideal for both freight and passenger operations, and the Class 92 shared a body with the Class 60, which explains why the two designs look very similar, despite being very different classes, except the ends were redesigned for the Class 92. The first of the class were decorated in a variation of rail freight grey, but over the years several different liveries have surfaced, mainly following the privatisation of British Rail. The livery seen on this example comes from 2015, and it depicts the Serco-operated Caledonian sleeper services. So there it is, up close and personal for you, the Hornby Railways Class 92. And to be honest with you, for £64.99, this is absolutely fine. I think the value for money is more or less spot on there. I think when you pay the sort of normal price of around £100, it becomes a little bit less reasonable because this model looks like it dates back almost 30 years. And of course, there's a good reason for that because it very much does. So when you start to look up close at some of the detailing, it's very clear that this is an old and quite crude model. Having said that though, from back here and from any sort of distance, 
The model does capture the profile of the Class 92, and I think for the casual modeler, it probably does so quite adequately. But I think the biggest issue here is that a Hornby Railways locomotive for £100 sounds like a bargain, whereas if this was put into the railroad range, which is absolutely where it belongs, by the way, then it doesn't seem such a bargain after all. And I think that is another area in which this model is a little bit misleading. In fact, more than a little bit. But let's start by taking a closer look at this model. So first of all, the finish I think is very poor. The finish is perfectly flat matte, not very convincing, quite toy-like. Unfortunately, I think that would have been a very easy fix with a coat of varnish or whatever. However, the decoration itself is decent. You've got the lovely Circo Stag logo there, which is a nice, simple, but well-applied print. And there's all sorts of little prints, such as the electric warning signs and some other even smaller prints, which I actually can't read. I'll put the close-up lens to some of those and see if they are readable, but they are small. So old model, yes. The decoration, though, does seem to be quite a bit more modern, and there is a fair bit in the way of lining and such. You've got the orange line across the top of the model, which looks fairly good, except where there are big blobs, but I suppose they are quite few and far between. And then you've got the yellow ends, which are reasonably crisply painted, I think. The grills and such are just a part of the moulding, so they are, I suppose, considered just part of the decoration. No etched grills. And I suppose on that note, I ought to show you the doors as well, because the grab rails and also the handles are all just a part of the moulding. Now, these have been decorated very, very precisely, which actually makes them look quite decent, but still they don't stand out quite as much as they would on a modern loco, where those parts are separately fitted. Taking a look at the bogey detail, again, this is quite simple in that all of the detailing here is just a part of the moulding, but, you know, Lima did quite a good job with their moulded detail back in the day, and that still holds true today, really. I mean, look at that. It looks all right, doesn't it? And you have got the pickup shoes for the third rail electric contact as well, and those are painted white, so they stand out quite nicely. Again, though, even though the box illustration suggested otherwise, the non-driven bogey here looks horribly unrealistic, doesn't it, with the sort of air gaps above the wheels. And the only contact with the body is that central shaft on which it is mounted. So that just sucks, really, doesn't it? Hornby Railways, I don't think so. The other bogey looks a little bit better because it actually looks like it's connected to the locomotive, which is a bonus, yeah, a real bonus. And then you've got the centre of the loco, which has got a fair bit of detail to it. Again, most of the effects here are just basic and moulded ones, but I think they, they do the job, more or less, certainly for £65. Now, looking at the ends of the locomotive, uh, it's not so bad, but the horns have no definition in them. Those are just clearly plastic pieces. The lights just look like they would on a Scalex strip car or some basic toy because there's no frames around the lights. It's just a bit of glazing with hopefully LEDs behind it. That would be nice. But yeah, the fact is the real Class 92 doesn't quite look like that. It does, however, have what appear to be separately fitted wipers on the windows, which is a nice, decent touch. The windows are glazed and they have reasonably fine looking window frames, but there is very little in the way of interior detail, although this model does actually have a cab space where you could fit crew if you wanted to. Now the buffers are just plastic unsprung buffers, as you'd probably fully expect. And the buffer beams are actually fairly well detailed, although again, as you can see, all of the detail there is just a part of the moulding. And then you've got the NEM tension lock couplings, which are mounted onto the end of each bogey. They don't pivot or anything, which keeps them simple, although it does mean that they could swing out quite a way, I suppose, over certain curves due to the long wheelbase of the bogies, but I don't think it's so long that it would cause any major issues. So I've left the best area of the model until last, and that is the top, where all of the electricals are. First up, major disappointment, plastic pantographs. These are entirely plastic, which of course means they cannot possibly pick up power from the overhead catenary wires which means that all that waffle in the instructions about working pantographs does not apply to this locomotive. So why that was included in the instructions, why the instructions were not rewritten to apply to this locomotive, I don't understand. But yeah, we've got basically just very flimsy plastic pantographs, not the most convincing in the world. And in fact, the top part is free to pivot like this. So the chances of it actually maintaining realistic contact with an overhead line is tiny, and it would just wear through that, wouldn't it? Because it's a thin plastic piece. 
That said though, there is a lot of wiring up here and these ceramic insulators to stop that wiring touching the body of the Loco. I mean, the fact that this is all here and separately fitted is quite impressive, although the wiring is quite thick and chunky and the molded detail isn't great in places. And again, some of these grills being separately fitted or etched would definitely make them look a little bit more realistic. But again, from any sort of distance, the effect there is quite good. And for £65, this is just fine, I'm going to go ahead and say. That's where the level of detail is concerned. And overall, I think it's about what you'd expect of a railroad loco, if only it had been branded as such. But now let's talk about the mechanism. I'm going to get this down onto the track and test it. And we'll have a look and see what makes this loco run. Uh, prepare to be disappointed because uh, I pretty much know exactly what we're going to get. And I think you probably do as well. But let's do it anyway. Let's see what the performance is like. Okay, so there she is, the Hornby Class 92 down onto the track. And I've just filmed the first performance test. So I will show you how that went in just a second. Next though, I want to talk a little bit about the mechanism. So we'll start with talking about the loco weight. And this loco comes in at 328 grams, which as you might expect, is not very much for a loco of this size. For example, the Helgen Class 35 is 500 grams, which is actually, <laughs> funnily enough, exactly 35% heavier than the much larger Class 92. So the weight, not fantastic, unfortunately. Which means that combined with the fact that this loco has just two driven axles, two out of six, which is an appalling feature on a modern loco, means that these rubber traction tyres are unfortunately necessary. So two of the four driving wheels have been fitted with rubber tyres as a substitute for good loco weight and all-wheel drive. The other bogey then is basically a complete dummy. None of those wheels are driven. They do, however, have pickups on them, so it should be a good reliable runner. Now, the driven bogey is just a snap together job, so you can pull that off quite easily. And that reveals a plastic toy grade mechanism with obviously no bearings on the axles and copious amounts of white lubricant. Now, the chassis itself is all plastic, which explains why the model is so light except there is this large metal weight which has been hot glued into the centre of the model and that's responsible for most of the Loco's weight. This model runs on a variation of Hornby's standard motor bogey which consists of a five-pole motor which is actually pretty good but no flywheel or any quality mechanical features like that and it's also basically unserviceable. You can take it apart if you're really desperate to clean it up or service it but I don't really recommend it. The wire management inside here consists of great mounds of black pus, or possibly even just poo from the seagulls. I hear they've got that in good supply down there, uh, but yeah, that just sort of pins the wires into position. Not very nice to look at, as you can see. And this is the DCC socket, 8-pin DCC decoder. You might be thinking that this board looks a little bit complex for a basic loco. Well, that's because this loco has lights. You can't see the LEDs or anything because they're hidden behind these light channels. But yes, this loco does have lights and you'll hear my surprise in just a second when I show you the running session. Not proper directional lighting. You've just got cool white LEDs which come on at the front of the loco depending on the direction. And then finally, the gauging is a little bit slack at between 14.1 and 14.2 millimetres back to back per axle, but hopefully that won't cause any problems. So it's a very, very basic mechanism, toy grade, railroad grade, not what you'd expect on a Hornby Railways Loco, but we've seen this enough times now that this is not a surprise. But let's move on to the performance test and I'll show you how that went. Moment of truth then, can the Hornby Class 92 drag itself along on its repugnant pair of rubber traction tyres? Let's find out. Direction forwards, let's see if it works. I still don't even know if it's got lights. Oh, I think it does, my word. And it does work as well. Sorry, I was just taken aback by the lights. Now it seems to be only front headlights. It doesn't have any tail lights or any other lights for that matter. But that is quite a surprise. I was not expecting that, I have to say. So it does have LED lights. Awesome. I wonder if they are DCC controllable. Ooh, that sounds a bit high tech, doesn't it? Oh, I don't know if that's a bit of a stretch or not. Maybe though. So how is the performance? Let's run it past at 50% speed for you. Unrunning, I should say. 
So that seems fairly slow, I would say. Yeah, it's not dead fast. And it's not been running yet, but that's full speed. So yeah, it's certainly not, um, not massively fast, is it? But uh, at least it's not racing along at low speed on the controller. That's, that's a good sign. And uh, what is the crawl like, I wonder? Let's see. Are you ready? Yeah, it's in shot. Here we go. I think it is a five polar in the air. I haven't checked that at this point, but hopefully it can do a decent crawl. It's buzzing. <laughs> turning up, turning up, turning up. Oh. <laughs> okay. No crawl. <laughs> Let's try it in reverse. Gently turning up. Oh, a little jerk. Oh, another couple. <laughs> so, I mean, <laughs> just trying to formulate some sort of comment to make. Uh, okay, so no, it's a terrible crawl, but it hasn't been running yet. So <laughs> I think we'll have to let it do that first before I draw a conclusion. But yeah, I mean, it works. That's, that's what I can say. Yeah, I can say that. It works. But let's see if it works around the track. Here we go. Forwards, 50% speed. Yeah, I think that speed's quite sensible, actually. Although I bet you it'll speed up as it warms itself up. And I'm quite impressed that it's got LED lights as well. That was not expected. Uh, they're not complex LED lights or anything. We haven't got any cab lights or tail lights or anything else like that. But we have lights. I mean, that is a big step up from the likes of the Hornby Class 66. Uh, which has just got painted blobs where the light should be. So that is really awesome. I mean, it's not an expensive feature, doesn't cost a lot, but I think it adds quite a bit to the model as it runs along. And speaking of running along, it seems to be doing that absolutely fine. It's done a full lap now, no derailments, no noticeable slowing down on the curves. So as much as I suspect the mechanism is a relatively poor quality one, it is at least fit for purpose except for the slow speed. I mean, the slow speed is absolutely terrible, but hopefully that will improve after running in. So I'll let this go now for 30 minutes in each direction, and when it's done that, we'll come back and try it again. Okay, folks, that is it. That is running in complete. And I've got to say, I mean, considering how bad the crawl was to start with, the performance here is not bad at all. It's good and smooth at the higher speeds. It's got loads of pickups, so it's not cutting out on points or anything like that. Let's see, it's never derailed or slowed down that I've noticed. Yeah, overall, it's absolutely fine for what it is. Uh, let me just demonstrate the performance over the points. We'll go as slow as this loco can. <laughs> yeah, as you can see, both bogeys going over the points without stopping. Yep, there you go, not bad. So how's the crawl now? That's a good question. It has now been completely run in, of course. So let's see now whether it's going to crawl more smoothly. So I'm gonna turn it up gradually again, see if there's any difference. All right, no, try again. So that's about as slow as we can go. So not fantastic, not fantastic. I mean, it's a cheap, pretty poor quality mechanism, and that does show through in the performance, doesn't it? So. I guess it's sort of reflected in the price, but still at £100, you would expect better, I think. But it's, like I say, all right at the higher speeds. Once you get to about there, it's decent. I have to say, I have seen better from that design of five-pole motor, so I think it is the rest of the mechanism which lets this down. Anyway, the pulling power is okay, 0.44 newtons, which should translate to around 27 coaches on straight and level track. And so to test that, I've set up some of these, well, look, oh, they are sleeper cars, all right? So that's my thought. Otherwise, I realise, yes, they're not particularly suitable because they are X L N E R ones, but they are sleeper cars. So anyway, let's go and couple to those, and they should at least allow us to see how the Loco behaves with a bit of a load. So here we go. <laughs> Clumsy start. So even at that speed, it's struggling. Let's go a bit faster. A bit more. <laughs> yes, it's not a, not a very controllable one. I mean, I'm on analog at the moment, so DCC users may have a different mileage there, but yeah, 
This one, not great on analog, and I have to say that is consistent with other Hornby Locos that use this same mechanism. Anyway, here we go. Let's send it off. We'll go at 50, because 50 is not that fast with this Loco. As you can see, it seems to be hauling those okay. So the theme of today's running session is going to be electric locomotives, so see if you can spot the odd one out to that rule, and the first person I see to spot it correctly, I will pin your comment. So on that note, we've got the Class 71 from Hornby, generally a much, much better electric loco this, much higher level of detail, and of course, performance to match. Really, really lovely run of this one. Ooh. Let's go in for the inside line. There we have another channel tunnel locomotive, or train I suppose. So this is fitting isn't it today? We've got the Eurostar locomotive, yes the Beatles one. Okay, so now let's go and watch the new loco up Gordon's Hill. So as you can see thanks to its rubber tyres, it is at least able to haul a decent length train even up a slight incline. Now. Would I rather the Loco be much heavier and have a die-cast chassis and have more driven axles and no traction tyres? Well, obviously, yes, I think that would be far, far better. But at least the Loco is a good puller, even though it does use horrible traction tyres, so it has got that going for it. But as you can see, yeah, it looks perfectly good, actually, doesn't it? From any sort of distance, the Loco looks perfectly good. The lights are a great bonus. Those are nice and bright, and I think they look pretty good. Nice and modern, cool white colour. The speed is about right, reliability absolutely fine on the track, so really for what it costs me, I don't have any major complaints for this. I think as a Hornby Railways model, yes, it ought to have been better, but at least it isn't more expensive than it is. I wouldn't necessarily recommend paying £100 for them, but even at that price, I think you can do worse elsewhere, can't you? So overall, not too bad. Time for my ratings then for the Class 92 from Hornby. Yeah, I mean, as the ratings show, this is quite a low-level locomotive. Slightly confusing that this has been marketed as a main-range Hornby Railways loco, but a quick look at it shows that really that isn't that appropriate. So the level of detail, I've given a two and a half star. It was going to be two because this is a very basic loco, but since it's got lights, that's quite an impressive feature, I think. So I've given it an extra half star for that. I mean, yeah, it's basic, no sprung buffers, lots of moulded detail, horrible flat finish, not keen on that. Detail quite chunky, no cab detail, and not that much finesse in the detail that is there. So, I mean, it's all right, from any sort of distance it looks fine, but it's not up to the same standard as a new tooled locomotive from really any manufacturer. Performance then, I've given three and a half. Generally, it's a good smooth runner, nice and consistent, no derailments or problems like that. It's just the crawl is really bad. A modern locomotive, really for any amount of money, particularly a Hornby Railways one, ought to have better performance than this, I think. And starting up and stopping is just quite unrealistic with this model because it is such a bad crawler. So it's lost a star and a half for that. I think that's generous, if anything. The pulling power then is okay, 0.44 newtons or 27 coaches on straight and level track. That's not too bad, I think it's all right, but it is considerably less than heavier diesels, even with its traction tyres. I mean, the Hornby Class 56, for instance, is more than double that in terms of the tractive effort. So not amazing, but okay. The mechanism then is a two-star, really. It loses points for the lack of proper bearings, for the traction tyres, for the plastic construction, for the clip-together assembly, for the lack of flywheel. It does, however, have a five-pole motor, so there's a silver lining right there. The quality, surprisingly, is actually really good. I don't know if it's just because this model is quite simple, but the build quality is fine. The decoration quality on the whole is really good. It's just a shame that it is so plasticky. If there was a bit more die cast on it, a die cast chassis, for instance, the model would weigh more, it would feel better quality. So I have knocked a star off for that, but overall the quality is not a huge problem here. The value for money too is not that terrible. I think at £102.99 it is a little bit on the pricey side, but not too much. I would have given it three star for that. But the price I paid, which was £64.99, that is fine for this. That is a good price for this. I think the other retailers at the moment are selling them a little bit more than that, but still it's not the worst ripoff we've ever seen. Not a bargain, but pretty good value, so four star. Overall then, that is 6.45 out of 10. Yeah, fairly middle of the road score. Into the logbook it goes at 14th place, just below the Hornby 060 Sentinel and above the Hornby Hogwarts Express set. 
yeah, it's all right, it's not too bad, but don't buy this expecting a super detailed modern loco, because you ain't gonna get one. So there you have it then, folks. That is my review of the Hornby Class 92. For the most part, the loco is exactly what you'd expect of an ex-Lima locomotive. Fairly basic mechanism, very, very basic detailing, although there was a little surprise in there with the lighting. So yeah, that was cool. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this review. Do comment down below and let me know what your thoughts are on this loco. Do you own one? What do you think about it? Are you going to be picking up the Acura scale one? I mean, they do look better, but of course they are a lot more expensive. So yeah, do let me know what your thoughts are on the Class 92 in double O gauge. And if you'd like me to try the Acura scale one, also do let me know. For now though, thank you for watching. You take care of yourselves and I will see you very soon for another video. All right, cheers everybody.